Noam Chomsky, the brilliant linguist, political philosopher, and intellectual, answered a question at a conference recently that many people had been wondering for a long time. Have you ever been wrong? And a consistency. And I want to ask you, you don't have to answer, Fifth Amendment, but do you think you've ever been wrong about an issue? You know, no, no, they're laughing. They're laughing. They're laughing nervously. It is not. Oh, a lot of times. It is not a. It is not a coy route into no, subversion. No, plenty of times. I can think of case after case. Yeah. I mean, take the worst crime of the post-war era, post-World War era. I mean, the worst crime was the U.S. attack on Indochina. A really horrendous crime. It destroyed three countries. They may never recover. Millions of people killed. You know, vast devastation, chemical warfare, destroyed crops, uh, every atrocity you can think of. The time to have become opposed to that was 1950. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything in the 1950s. It was pretty clear what was going on. It wasn't until the early 60s, when Kennedy sharply escalated the war, that I started trying to yeah. talk a little bit about it and not enough. And that was a bad mistake. Yeah. And there are plenty of others yeah. like it. So that's interesting. He's saying Vietnam is an issue where he was wrong at the beginning. But I think he's wrong about him being wrong. Because he was against it the entire time. He's specifically saying, I didn't take enough action at the time. So I think I was wrong in not taking enough action. So in other words, protests, speeches, you name it. So I'm going to give him credit on the thing where he says he was wrong. I think he was right about that. Just because you didn't, you know, really go out of your way to put a lot of effort behind participating in anti-war protests doesn't mean that you were default pro the war. No, you were against it from the beginning. So I think he's being a little too hard on himself there. And now what we can say is... He's wrong about the thing that he said he was wrong on, because he was right about Vietnam. But here's why I wanted to discuss this. I wanted to be a little bit of a dick. See, I, I love Noam Chomsky. I've read many of his books. Uh, I read Chomsky on anarchism when I was, I don't know, 18, 19, something like that. And I, had, I remember rereading pages like over and over because... I would only soak in like 30% of what he was saying because his writing style and the concepts he was mentioning, it was so far above and beyond my head. So I love Noam Chomsky. He's such a brilliant guy. He's so far above and beyond what we're used to in our ridiculous mainstream media today where it's just vapid talking points and people shouting at each other for two-minute segments and then they move on. He's a guy who really likes to have in-depth in -depth conversations and get into nuance and complexity and explain the dynamics of the way something works and he's very well researched on so many things but I do think he's wrong about some pretty big issues now I always say and I always will say because I think it's true that there's no better person on the planet that critiques American foreign policy he's the most right anybody has ever been ever on the issue of American foreign policy. All of his books, every word he's ever written on that topic is spot on. So I'm with him on foreign policy 100%. But where he's wrong, I think, is domestic policy and on uh, economics. See, Noam Chomsky, he's, and I think he would admit this too, he's a genuine revolutionary. Like, he really wants to totally scrap everything we've done and move towards a very communal-like system, a very uh, hands-on system where he says, as he said repeatedly, I think the people who work in the factories ought to own them, meaning everybody, and it's like kind of a communal ownership of property all around. So you don't call it communism, you don't call it socialism. It's, I guess you could say, like he said in his book, uh, anarcho-syndicalism, I think he calls it but I don't want to get too far into the weeds with terminology and whatnot. But I disagree with him on that. In fact, I, I'm, I would argue, significantly more conservative than Noam Chomsky on economic issues and domestic issues. Because uh, I've maintained for a very long time, I think the best systems in the world, and probably, if not the best, almost, almost the best system that humans can create, are uh, the Scandinavian region, the Nordic region. Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Sweden. What they have is a is a mix of socialism or government and 
capitalism. So they heavily regulate the capitalism, and you know they have great uh, a great social safety net, uh, paid vacation by law, all this great stuff. Okay, and then they also have uh, universal health care, universal education, universal daycare, and they have this heavily subsidized basic goods like system. So you still have this aspect of competition because there's some aspect of capitalism there. But you also have this floor that people can't go below. I like that. I think that's the best we can can hope for. Or maybe we get a little bit better, but not much. Like I say all the time, I don't believe in a utopia. I believe in close to a utopia. And to me, that's like a social democratic system like we see in those countries. So I'm fairly significantly more conservative than Noam Chomsky on, on those issues. And I do think he's wrong on those. Now, I'll add the massive caveat at the end here. <laughs> I'm an asshole who doesn't have nearly as much education as he does, and he knows way more than I do about probably everything. So I'm probably wrong and at fault for even pointing out that I think Chomsky's wrong on those issues because naturally he would have some sort of brilliant response that puts me to shame and where he would say, you are too conservative, and here's why we're it's right to be in favor of a more revolutionary system. So I guess to each their own, and him and I in this imaginary conversation will agree to disagree, but again, in conclusion, while I think he's right on foreign policy, I think he's uh, too liberal for me on economic and domestic policy.